What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be working on a 5th gen 4Runner that has KDSS um, equipped to it and uh, a lot of people um, tend to not get the KDSS model just because it is limited um, when you do a lift kit and uh, um, other things to it. So um, today we're going to show you guys how we can get a KDSS, uh, KDSS equipped forerunner um, to be almost as capable as a non-KDSS um, forerunner. So let's get started. So this is how to tell if you do or do not have KDSS. If you look right under your driver's side um, door, there will be this module box that is attached to the frame. So this here is your kind of your KDSS brain and it will have lines running to the front and the back of it. And another way to tell is that if you look down at your sway bar, which is this thick bar that runs from one axle to the other, um, it will be a lot thicker and it will actually have this um, electronic ram to it. It will only be on one side. Um, so in the front, it will be on the driver's side. And then in the back here, also on the driver's side, as you can tell here, this is the sway bar, and this is actually the new piece that we're gonna be installing in this video that you guys will see. But this is the KDSS RAM, um, electronic RAM that controls the KDSS. So before we get into the install, let's talk about um, what makes the KDSS good and what makes it bad. Um, so the good would be KDSS, um, it is electronic so it does um, kind of automatically um, stabilize your vehicle for you and it kind of has two different modes, one mode being um, low speed and the other being high speed. Um, I think once it reaches 12 miles per hour what KDSS does is it stiffens up the sway bar um, with the electronic RAM that I showed you guys earlier and what that does is it allows the vehicle to be stiffer so that way if you need to um, turn um, at a faster speed or stop um, quickly uh, in case of an accident or something like that um, it would be a lot better being that it is stiff. Um, so that would be a, a really good um, uh, positive for the KDSS. The, the downside to it is that when you want to lift it, um, like the one behind us here, there the options aren't as, uh, as great for it because you do have to get uh, KDSS um, specific versions and you do have to, um, well not you, um, those versions kind of limit your travel because of the KDSS um, system. And what I mean by that is the sway bar in the back and I believe in the front too um, will actually contact with, um, with something. So in the rear, the sway bar on uh, the KDSS system will actually contact with the track bar. Um, in the front, however, I don't think it actually contacts anything, but um, the, the side that is fixed, which is the passenger side, um, it is, since being that it, it is fixed, um, it doesn't allow you to go down anymore. So you lose that down travel um, on the passenger side. Um, same thing goes for the rear. Um, you do lose that tr down travel on the passenger side as well. Um, but with that being said, what we're going to do today to this one behind us here, we're going to be installing two things. We're going to be installing uh, a drop bracket for the rear of the uh, KDSS system to allow you to get more down travel out of the rear and uh, it allows it to not bind and make contact with um, between the KDSS system and the track bar. Um, and then we're going to be installing a, um, a, a harness with a connector um, 
that is going to be able to be controlled by a switch that is going to allow you to turn on and kind of off the KADS system um, and what by, I mean by that is that it's going to allow you to, to um, control it when you're in uh, the two modes, uh, the stiff mode and the softer mode so that way when you guys are um, on a trail going faster you guys can switch that off of the stiff mode so that way your ride's a lot more comfortable um, and uh, that's exactly what we're going to do today so let's get started with the, uh, the rear so this here is the, uh, the piece that we're going to be installing in the rear um, and this is going to extend your KDSS uh, sway bar down that way you can get more down travel and it will prevent the bind that I'm talking about where um, the sway bar will contact with the, uh, the track bar. Alright, so we just finished installing the drop kit for the uh, KDSS sway bar. So as you can see, we got a lot of room now from the actual track bar to the actual sway bar um, on both sides. So this is kind of the main reason why you want to do this. Um, so one, to get more down travel and then two, to prevent any bind or any um, contact that would get made between the track bar and the actual sway bar itself from here. Um, so this will allow you to get a little bit more down travel for sure um, before you hit that track bar. So that's pretty cool. Um, and now KDS guys can have almost just as much travel as the non-KDSS guys. All right, so Gabe's going to be helping me today. Um, once again, the KDSS module is right by your driver's side or underneath your driver's side door. We're going to take this cover off first to um, show you guys the actual KDSS system. So there it is with all the lines running to the back and the front. What we're going to basically do um, is clean up all this dirt first. All right, so here is what's going to be in the kit, uh, minus the hardware that we already have over there. So the main part of it is going to be this harness here. Um, has plug and play connectors on it, and then this side will connect up. Second, we got the actual switch itself with the uh, KDSS and the Black Kit Customs logo on it um, and the connector or the harness for that. And then we got a relay that's gonna allow us to control all that. So this is everything. We're gonna go ahead and uh, install it. So first thing we're doing is putting some dielectric grease into the connectors. Um, the dielectric grease is included, um, which is really nice. So that way you don't have to go to the store and find it. Next, we're just gonna be unplugging it and then just plugging it in. It's really nice that it's just mostly plug and play. Um, there's nothing to it. Unplug and then plug it back in. So next we are tucking it up towards the, uh, up above the frame pretty much and then we're running it to the front and we're gonna go through the engine bay and inside to the driver's side and then that's where we're going to be putting the switch. What we're going to do along the way too is just put zip ties on everything, just keep everything neat um, and that way there's just nothing flopping around. So we're just continuing to run this wire. So we took the, uh, the splash guard off right there, just the top part of it just to make it easier. Um, so we're just running this and once we have this installed here, we're gonna lower the vehicle, um, install the relay on it, 
and then we're gonna run the switch wire inside. That wire is coming up right there. What we're doing now is we're just connecting the relay to the wire that we fed up. So what we're doing now, um, it comes with these really nice um, connectors that has solder in the middle. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect the two that came off of the harness that we pulled up to the red and the yellow wires on the relay right, right now so we got the red and the yellow connected to the wire that we pulled up from down there um, we added a ring terminal to the black wire on the relay which we are going to be connecting to itself um, to the firewall on that hole right there using the uh, bolt provided and then for the inline out of fuse um, right here it didn't come with the fuse, so we put a 10 amp fuse in there. Uh, we also added a ring terminal to the end, which we're gonna be connecting right here. And then we extended the inline fuse wire by just adding some more wire to it. That way we can reach all the way over here. As you can see, there's a yellow and a red wire here. That is the KDSS module harness. And then the blue wire here is going to be your power into the battery terminal. The white wire is going to be for the OEM style switch. You can see that's running to the firewall. It's going to go through there and power up the switch in there. And then the ground wire sticking out here, we're going to ground itself into here. And then you can ground that. To one of these slots here. Now that we have that all nice and uh, shrunk, what we're going to do is we're going to connect the relay and that ground just to the firewall into an existing hole that's already threaded so we don't have to drill anything new. And then we uh, um, taped it to this long screwdriver. What we're going to do is we're going to go through that rubber grommet. That's kind of our go-to um, spot to get any wiring inside the vehicle. So this screwdriver just allows us to puncture that hole pretty easily. And it's long enough that it will reach all the way to the inside with no issues. So what we're going to do is just look under there and grab the wire, untape it, and pull it through. Alright guys, so here's where we're at. So that blue wire here that we extended from the engine bay. We pulled it from down there. We pulled this panel off just by pulling it straight back. Pretty easy. We fed it up here, and then we went through this spare location that we have here, which is where we're gonna be putting the switch. Um, and then, so this blue one is going to go on the green wire that is gonna be going to the switch. And then back here on this panel, we have a couple T-taps. One that is going to be um, a backlit um, connector for the switch itself. So that way when you turn your light on, um, the switch will be lit. And then the other one is down there, that red thing. Um, that's the other T-tap. That one is going to be providing power um, for the switch itself, which is going to go to this red wire. And then the black wire that is on here, we added a ring terminal, which we are gonna be using um, this bolt for to ground it. And then lastly, is going to be the blue wire. So this blue wire, that one is going to be connecting to the backlit of uh, the wiper connector that we unplugged. So we found that one, which is white. Um, but I know on some vehicles it could be green, so you just got to find out which color is the backlit. So basically flip your switch on your light panel here and see if any of the lights come on and then see if there's power to that. So one last thing that we need to do before we actually test it out, make sure everything works, is to connect the power that we ran 
from the inline fuse to the positive side. Now that everything is connected, then we'll go inside and make sure it works. Okay, so we'll turn the ignition on. So, backlight is on. There it is. And then it comes on once we flip it on. And then, right there, is the KDSS. Turn it off. Okay, it goes off. And then flip it on. There it is. So basically, every time the switch is on, your KDSS is deactivated or in soft mode. Um, so anytime you see it on the dash, you know it's in soft mode. And then anytime this is off, the KDSS would be in um, in its normal activated uh, feature. Now that we know that that works, we'll just feed all the wires back there, put the switch in its place, install this panel back, and then we're pretty much done. And then one last thing is we just gotta put this cover on and just make sure everything is bundled up. All right guys, that's pretty much it for this video. Um, this modification or these two is gonna be um, pretty essential for you guys who have KDSS who want to get the most out of it, especially if you wanna off-road. Um, and uh, yeah. We'll have everything in the description as always, and we'll see you guys next time. Peace.